This is the uh, third video of uh, chapter one of uh, Friedberg uh, in Suspense, FIS, uh, in which I completed all the problems in section 1.5. Uh, did not watch any more videos from the IIT lectures, uh, and I know, and I'll be, and I know that I'll be slacking on these a lot because I want to make a lot of progress. These are more. I'm going to use these for review. Uh, <clears throat> and then I read section 1.5, did all the problems of which there were 17 proofs, and read all of section 1.6, which is a long read. And I think, I think there's just one more video in chapter one. Uh, although there's plenty because uh, section 6 is long. It's got a lot of problems, which is wonderful. So this is a November, uh, November 27 video and uh, it got 21 problems out of which 17 are proof. So you can see how big the yield is. So now we're up to uh, 65 proofs uh, for a total of 99 problems so far in this book. Then uh, when it comes to the reading itself, just show you briefly. So it was linear dependence and linear independence. And a bunch of problems. Then basis and dimension, uh, section 1.6. And this is really the whole business of uh, getting a linear independence set, continuing to add to it until you get a basis. Then one beyond getting a basis, you're really in linear dependence. And you can cover the entire space, but you're not in, no longer in a basis or a linear independent set. Uh, laid out very nicely here in this uh, book with uh, this diagram, right? So you're in linear independent sets. Eventually you add more vectors, you get to the basis, and then you keep adding more, and then you're just in the generating sets. Uh, the usual theorems, this is no different than it's done in, in, uh, Anton, in Anton, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's well done. I mean, it's no different. And that's, yeah. And then, of course, at the t tail end, and that's why I have Anton here, there is a, uh, an application topic, the Lagrange interpolation formula. Very nice, uh, kind of like uh, two sets that come together that don't intersect for applications of uh, fitting, uh, fitting polynomials. These are all used for fitting, fitting functions. Because FIS does Lagrange, and then uh, if we go briefly in Anton, <clears throat> there are two problems, and I don't remember if I did them or not. I probably tried them. I should go back and look. I didn't. Uh, for Hermite polynomials and Laguerre polynomials. So th that that topic is uh, uh, discussed also in <clears throat> in Anton. Then onto the book, and I'm sorry I'm a little. <clears throat> like this because of our uh, allergies. We're getting uh, fall allergies around here. It's not a cold and it's not COVID. Of course, I already got COVID last month. So that was that. Was that. All right. So I finished. I was in the middle of uh, doing problems for section 1.5. Uh, right? No, this is, this is reading. No, this is reading of section 1.5. Problem 17, 16, okay, that was the end. Okay, so this is the reading of section 1.5. I'm sorry, th those were the last problems of section 1.4. And uh, familiar territory of uh, working with matrices. Did okay for true and false for section 1.5 problems. And when I checked my work, I did okay also. Familiar territory of uh, working with matrices. Uh, some cases <coughs> gave an incomplete answer, but I, I was in the I was in the neighborhood. Gave myself a lower grade because I should have said it's two to the n for the Boolean uh, set. So when you do the Boolean uh, set and you do the addition or the multiplication table, um, it's characteristic two. I learned this in the uh, Mendelssohn number systems book. Really glad that I did that book. Uh, and so there are four vectors for dimension two, but it's really two to the n vectors for n dimensions. That was the correct answer, which I did not give. Um, then more proofs. Of course, it's, it was mostly a proofs section, which I love because that's what I'm here for uh, in this book. Yeah, then we just worked out a bunch of proofs. All about linear dependence, linear independence. 
how to how to do your spanning set and how to add to it, how to take from it, which really happens in section 1.6 with theorems, but it really begins with problems in section 1.5. They dovetail uh, pretty well. <clears throat> so reading section 1.6, and of course, as always, uh, through the examples, I always work them out just to make sure that I get the same result, um, and I did. Then, yeah, so you start with the your linear independent set, and then you keep adding to it until you get the whole generating set. Uh, I, for some reason, theorem 1.10, the replacement theorem, was just hard on my head. It really was. So I actually had to, like, summarize it all again and then pick it up to finish it. Just the way it's laid out, it was easy for me to get confused to where I was with each set. And that's why I had to do a full recap in the middle of uh, reading it. And then working through the examples that are mentioned. Uh, more proofs, again, for the whole theme. And then reading that, that last bit that I showed you all about uh, how you start from linear independent sets, you add more, you get to a basis, you add more, you get gener to generated sets. Once again, working out the example through, just to make sure that I understood uh, what was being done. The same here with the dimension for a symmetric matrix, uh, which is, this is not done in the book. I actually just did it uh, for the cases of two dimension and three dimension, just actually work it out and sure enough, it is uh, n times n plus one over two. <clears throat> and then the Lagrange interpolation formula uh, which is straight out of numerical analysis, and I don't happen to have a numerical analysis book. That's one more thing uh, to look up books for later, 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 because I've got so many things on my list. And I already started working on section 1.6 problems just briefly, but that takes me to the reading of section 